So you've seen the theory about how a mail merge works. It's now time to put that theory into action. In order to do that, we firstly need a base letter. This is our training letter. It's available in your working folder. And this is our single letter, and it fits on a single page, that we wish to send to multiple recipients. However, we wish to customize it, hence the need for a mail merge. Now you'll see within the letter, there are some squiggly brackets that contain areas that I wish to customize, such as the person's address, today's date, their name, the training title that they've seen, the date they purchased it, and the title again. So there's nothing to stop us from using the same data over and over again in our mail merge. Once we have the base letter ready, the steps are fairly straightforward. We go to mailings. It has its own little ribbon. We then firstly hear where it says date here. I'd actually like to change that to be today's date. So let's delete the little boxes and go to insert date and time. I then choose the date I wish to have as in the format, not the actual date because it will always put today's date in. Let's go with day of the week, month of the year, date and year. If I then make sure I place a tick in update automatically and then OK, it will appear to put today's date in, but this is a field. It's all grayed out and it will update to today's date whenever I want to use this letter again. So that's extremely useful. The next step is to join our letter to some data. So we go to mailings and we can either run through this manually or we can go through the little wizard option. So if I go to start mail merge, I can come down to step by step mail merge wizard. So we'll use the mail merge wizard for the moment, but then subsequently look at each of the steps individually so that you don't have to actually use the mail merge wizard. By using the mail merge wizard, I'm not going to miss anything out. So we choose the mail merge wizard and it pops up a little option on the right. What type of document are you working on? Well, that's already decided. I've got it open. It's a letter. Next, step two. How do you want to set up? Do you want to use the current document or start with another template? Well, I want to use the current document. I've already done it. So effectively, by having the letter ready, you've actually done the first two steps of the wizard. So step three is to get our data. Now I can either use an existing list or I can use my contacts and outlook or I can type a new list. For this particular letter, we're going to type new list and then I need to create. Now what will then happen is I'm given a sort of sample data file here with a set number of columns and I can start entering people in. But before I do that, I actually need to make sure that I have columns to store the data I'm going to use in my mail merge, which I don't. I don't have the training title and I don't have the date they purchased it. So I need to customize the columns. Now I can either add a new column or I can use some of the ones that are already there. For example, I'm not really going to make use of the work phone and the email address. So I can take the work phone and rename and call that training title. OK, and I can rename the email address to be date purchased. OK, then when I say OK, those two column headings then get changed. Then I can enter some people. So Mr. John Honey doesn't work for a company, lives at 13 High Street, Atalanta. Training title, Excel for beginners. And when did he buy it? January the 4th, 2013. Then we have Mrs. Mary Jones. She lives at 2345 Main Street. Wanderville, not applicable for the state or the zip code. And that happens to be in Brazil. What was her training title? Word for advanced users. And she bought that on February 5th, 2013. Now I could continue in the same vein, adding more and more data. Now, as soon as I'm happy that I've added enough data, I would click OK. I'm then asked if I want to save the data, which I do as mail merge data, because I'm not going to use it for anything else. I need to make sure I know where it's saving it because by default it will go to my data sources on my machine and that might not be where I want it to be. So you need to make sure that you store it in the correct location and then save, which then brings me back to the data so that I can filter it, sort it, etc. But we'll be looking at that subsequently. So that's my data. I only have two records, but there could be 200, there could be 2000, there could be 20,000. I have my list in place. So that's step 
three completed, although I can now go into edit recipient list if I need to add any more. Let's go to step four. Step four is where we effectively merge the data with the letter. At the moment, we just have our silly little boxes here, but really I want the correct fields there. So instead of recipient address here, let's delete that and use more items to add in the person's first line of address, their second line of address, their city, their state, their zip code, and their country. So I've inserted all the fields I need. I can then close this box and come back into the letter to actually put them on separate lines. So country on a separate line, zip code on a separate line, state on a separate line, city on a separate line, and address line two on a separate line to address line one. So that places the address information for their name. Let's delete my little box, go to more items, and put their first name in. Let's be familiar. Close for the training title. Again, we delete the little bit I put in. That's just a mark, so I know where to put it. More items, training title, close, date of purchase, and more items, date purchased. And then finally, the title there. I've removed all my little symbols. More items, training title again. So you can see I have been able to use the training title twice. There's not a restriction on how many times you use the same column. So that's step four. I've now told it where to put my data inside the letter. Step five allows me to preview the data with the letter. So here I see the first person, which is John. Dear John, you've enjoyed Excel for Beginners. You bought it on January the 4th. Regarding your Excel for Beginners, and there's his address. I can move to recipient two, use the navigation keys here, and I see Mary's information. Now, if there were a third, I could go to the third, and third's actually a blank record, so I see nobody. So this previewing is really quite useful for just flicking through the data to make sure it does look right with the information in. You also have the opportunity to exclude the recipient that you're currently viewing. So if you're clicking through the data and you think, actually, that person, he doesn't want a letter, you can go click, exclude this recipient, and they will be excluded from your list. That's step five. Step six of the wizard, the last step effectively, is to decide on your final steps here. To finish the merge, we either send the letters to print, very dangerous, or edit individual letters. My personal choice is always go to merge to new document, which is edit individual letters, because that gives you a last chance to look at them before you actually print them. So I'm going to choose that option to merge the records, all of them, the current record, or records from one to however many. So that's the record number. Now we only have two records, so I'm actually going to go with all. OK, and that produces a brand new document called letters one. I can see that up here. And I should have one letter for John, then a new page and a letter for Mary. And because of my blank data, I have a third page, which is a blank letter. So I need to make sure I don't send that. So I would only print pages one and two. So this is the final result. Now, it may be that you're not ready to send these yet or you don't actually want to print them. You want to save them and do something else with them. So I would need to save this as a separate document. So that's save as. Notice it's put my name because that's the first line of text in the document. I'm going to call this merged letters save. And then if I'm not going to print now, I can close that. I'm then taken back to my base mail merge document. Now this is the most important document because this has the letter in and it has the connection to the data. So together, we now have our mail merge document and I can re-merge from here any stage by simply doing that last step of the wizard, edit individual letters. If the mail merge is closed, because I've saved and gone away and reopened, I can always go back to it by going start mail merge, step by step mail merge wizard. And you can see it remembers that you're already at step six because you've created the letter, you've connected to some data and you've told it where to put the data within the letter. That's the basics of mail merge. Obviously now we need to progress and look at changing little bits of that mail merge by yourself instead of using the step-by-step -step wizard.